I'm not going to take a whole lot of time. Uh, some of you were in Rosetown for Biker Sunday, and I shared kind of more of the story. But I just, uh, I just want to give God all the glory. First of all, I want to say that because sometimes, you know, you share a testimony, and then sometimes people think, "Oh, you're just talking about yourself." But I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about what God has done to tell of all His wondrous works. And uh, I want to relate it a bit to motorcycles. Uh, of course, as a kid. Probably many of you, as well as myself, rode mini bikes, you know, and then when I was 15, I started at uh, dirt bikes. So that's 15, that's, that's six, seven years ago anyways. <laughs> at least. <laughs> anyhow, no, I've been riding for over 40 years. And uh, anyhow, then graduated to street bikes and so forth. Some of you heard some of my stories, uh, so I won't go into them all, but I was saved at the age of 17 fellow shared the gospel with me and prayed with me right in the break room at work. 15 minute break. And that's another whole story. I was saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and my life was changed. Within three weeks, this fellow that led me to the Lord was involved in starting a house church, and they didn't have anybody to lead the worship. And I was the only guy that knew how to play guitar. So here I was, fresh, a new Christian, and, uh, but I was only to play guitar, so someone gave me a cassette tape. Remember cassette tapes? And, uh, well, I'm sure that's way before your time, and, uh, and a songbook. And I was learning songs by listening to this cassette and, and looking at the words in the songbook, and that's how I started in music ministry, 1977, and began traveling with my pastor. My pastor traveled around, and we'd set up chairs or whatever, do house meetings, do meetings in community halls, and, and all of that. I was doing that in my teen years. And traveling with him. He would preach and I'd play the guitar. He'd pray for people and I would catch them. Back in the charismatic days of the 70s, if anybody remembers that. Anyhow, glorious times. Did that for eight years and then uh, when at the tender age of 25, got my first church, pastored in North Bay, Ontario. Anybody know where North Bay is? I don't know what the population is now, but at that time it was 52,000. Beautiful uh, city and, um, and uh, some of the guys in the church rode bikes. And so we used to ride all together. Well, one of the outreaches that I did back then, I uh, went to a place called Cobalt, which was a little over an hour north of North Bay. And so I would send my guitar and stuff ahead with somebody else like I did this morning. Thank you, Reno. And, uh, and I would ride my bike. Well, coming back from there one time, it was around midnight, and I was on my way back home. I remember it was cold. It was in the springtime, and I was riding my bike, and uh, I'd say probably doing about 90 kilometers an hour or something like that. And all of a sudden, there was this big black shape on the road called a moose right in front of me. And I didn't have a chance to do anything but scream. And so, <laughs> my, it was standing broadside. In those days, we didn't have halogen headlights or anything like that. So, uh, my helmet, my windshield, my helmet went right under his chinny chin chin and my handlebar was sticking up past the fairing, scraped his chest, and I went right under him like that. The handlebar cranked to the left, and I'm wobbling all over the road, crying out to Jesus. I had just finished preaching, and uh, the bike straightened out, and I kept going. Now, at that point, I had never seen a real moose before, so I was tempted to turn around and go have a look at it, and I thought, no, I better not. <laughs> Maybe I made him mad. He was wondering what this big insect was. <laughs> Anyhow, I stopped at the first at the first uh, uh, gas bar on the rest stop on the highway, and and I had a little molding around my windjammer fairing. Remember windjammer fairings back in the 80s? And there was bits of moose hair. In there. Oh my goodness! I was actually a little bit on the quiet side for about three days. <laughs> well, I got over it. Anyhow. So uh, from then, moved on to different places, uh, pastored in the far north uh, for a couple of years. I was on an Indian reserve, spoke through an interpreter, or as we used to call him, an interrupter. He was the uh, chief of the village, and I learned to sing in Cree, and that was uh, quite an adventure. And then uh, I pastored other places in Ontario, Long Lac, Geraldton, uh, all throughout the north for about eight years. And... Uh, then, I'm from Kitchener, Ontario, by the way, and so then I got an invitation to come to Saskatchewan. Prince Albert! I never even heard of Prince Albert, and I have never been to Saskatchewan. All I saw was pictures of amber waves of green. Or that's America. But anyhow, the wheat fields, you know. 
I was told that if you're traveling to BC, you sleep through Saskatchewan until you get to the mountains. Don't throw rotten eggs, that's just what I was told. But anyhow, friends of mine had moved out here before. They were in Big River. They said, oh, there's, uh, there's forests. I said, forests in Saskatchewan? I just couldn't believe it. And which is really funny because uh, forestry was the main industry in PA when I came there. And uh, I went back for pastor's conference once and someone from Ontario, one of my buddies, says to me, oh, you must be glad to see a tree, huh? <laughs> How uneducated we are about Canada. Anyhow, um, it would take me too long to go into all about how the cowboy ministry started, but suffice to say, supernaturally, God has called me to do cowboy ministry. And uh, in, in addition, addition to the New Hope Church, uh, which is Baptist Church in uh, PA, which I pastor, I do six cowboy churches around the province. So I travel all over on my iron horse or in my cowboy truck. I said recently at Battleford Cowboy Church, I said, you know that GMC on the front of my truck, when I come out in the morning, you know what that GMC stands for? It's not God Mechanic coming. It's, good morning, cowboy! <laughs> Anyhow. So, so I travel all over and do these cowboy services. Dodie was the first one who picked me up at the airport in 1997, and I turned his hair white. But uh, anyhow, we had, we've had a wonderful time. Uh, I've had a lot of ups and downs in my life. I've been through divorce, and I know that's a horrible thing. I don't even want to talk about that. Been through that, but God is good, and, uh, and life moves forward. And it's just wonderful to see, to travel around. I set up chairs. I do all the things that I helped my pastor to do back in the 1970s. He's gone on to his heavenly reward, and here I am doing these same things these many years later. And, and so many times, when I come home, I put my guitar away, and I think, how much longer and am I going to be able to do this? There will come a day when I hope someone will come and sing for me. But I give God all the glory for what he's doing. Uh, as I said, supernatural, uh, word of prophecy, word of wisdom has come, come over me, calling me to different places, and, and God just opens it up, and uh, tremendous, tremendous. I live in Spiritwood. Um, when we first went to go to Spiritwood, uh, I had been invited to go start a cowboy church in Spiritwood, and I kind of held off, and I prayed about it for a year. And uh, someone said to me, yeah, well, someone else tried to start a cowboy church here. It didn't go very well, so it wouldn't surprise me if it wouldn't go over well. Real words of encouragement, eh? Yeah. So I prayed about it for about a year and then decided to go and we went to the hall and started up. And uh, there was people from Battleford and the different and PA and different cowboy churches coming to help uh, get it started. So our first launch service, right? Uh, I counted 16 people. 13 of us were there putting on the service. <laughs> So I'll let you do the math and figure out how many people were there from the community. Anyhow, uh, it's now grown. Uh, we have church there every Wednesday night in the Legion in Spiritwood, and it's just tremendous. We have a whole cowboy church band with a fiddle and guitars and, and bass. And uh, Anyhow, I just want to give God all the glory for all that he's doing in my life. And uh, I'm looking forward to what he's going to do down the road too. But anyhow, God is good, and I want to lift up the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's do another song out of our songbook. How about number 588? 